everybody. Uh, today we're going to be looking at different ways that you can select different parts of your image um, and use them to move parts, to replace them, to put them in a different image, um, and so on. So as you can see, I started off with my person jumping. I imported this image from online. Um, and there are, um, in the top left of your toolbar, there are quite a few different tools that you'll use to select. Now, I just selected the lasso tool, and this will be just like a lasso. I'll want to um, circle everything that I am taking away um, from my original image. So, with this being said, it will take you a long time to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just zoom in and I'm just going to do the arm a little bit quickly um, so that you can see how that would work out for me. So I'm circling and I'm holding the whole time on my mouse. I'm not letting go. And oops, I got a little bit of sky in there. That's okay. Continuing down. And there we go, we're finishing up now. We're going to drag it right over where we started. And you can see when I move my arm using the move tool, I'm gonna go ahead and see, well, how much sky came off with it? A little bit, it's still relatively arm shaped and I could have done this for my full person, but it was really tricky to get inside some of those spaces there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at a couple different tools now. Um, what I'm doing there, I'm just deselecting by going to the rectangle tool uh, and clicking. And now we're on the polygonal lasso tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a much more geometric result. And I'm just clicking and um, going to the next point. Now this could work really well. If you had like a precise shape that, was, um, that would be able to uh, be cut out this way, um, you know, the hand is very organic, so it would just be a little bit more challenging for you to do this. But you're going to see that the result comes out, well, kind of okay. Continuing down the arm. And here we go. So again, move tool, we'll see. Well, that was a lot more accurate than the lasso tool, although the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool can be useful sometimes. Let's look at some that will automatically do this work for you. So the last option in the lasso tool segment right here um, is the magnetic lasso tool. So you can see that as I hover over it, I'm gonna choose that in the very bottom. And as I go, this is going to use contrast or colors that are different from each other. And it's going to auto predict um, where I would be placing my lasso tool. This is a great tool. Um, sometimes it can get a little funky though, because computers obviously can't really tell the difference between what's an arm or what's a sky. It can really only tell the difference in color. Um, so, for example, if the light was different or shining more directly on his arm, it might actually have a really hard time to do this. Anyway, now that I have gone all the way over, I'm going to go back to my move tool, um, and I'm going to just give a little drag, and we see that that's pretty much perfect. Just a little bit of fingertips were left behind. All right, this is what you're going for when you are um, cutting something out in Photoshop. Now we're going to look at... Um, some more that are contrast based and because of this I'm going to zoom out so that I can show you how quick these ones are instead. So the first one that we're going to do is the quick select tool and this is really good if you have a shape that's high contrast again. Um, so the colors are different because that is what it's going to recognize and what you do it has a little plus on a brush. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to keep on clicking until my person is fully highlighted. So I have that blinking line all around my person. One thing to always make sure of, you see in the bottom right hand corner that I have my um, layer one active. Sometimes this can get really tricky, especially if you have uh, multiple layers active. And at that point, um, 
you would want to experiment with checking the sample all layers um, checkbox at the very top of your screen. But for now, because I just have one, um, one layer, it's going very well. The hair might be a little bit iffy because we see that blue sky coming in between the hair. So sometimes things like that um, can be a little bit challenging when we cut them off. If I put them on a white background, for example, you would probably see that blue sky coming through his hair. All right, now let's see, almost done. Same thing with those shorts there. So because the shorts actually go into the air, we see those little, um, the strands on the bottom of them, they're probably going to get lost. And we'll just have to see how that looks if we're happy with it later on. Here we go. You know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Let's see. Is it worth it? Nope, it's not worth it. It's not picking up on it. So I'm going to just control Z. We are all done there and we're going to go without them. All right, just getting the last leg in before I forget to do that. And again, just selecting it all. Now, if you were to um, select the sky or too much, for example, right now, what you could do at the top of the screen, there is the minus brush, right? So you could just click that, go in, and it'll be like an eraser tool of it. All right, so moving this worked out pretty well, right? We see all around the uh, previous image, that white space that there's really not a lot left behind. It's fairly convincing that this, um, this person would be jumping on whatever background that we place them. That hair doesn't even look um, too bad either. We're losing those strands on the shorts, but you can't tell if you didn't know they were there, right? All right, so another one is the um, magic wand tool. This tool is really great if you have something that is basically all the same color. This person has a lot of different colors going on. Um, and I say color, but I'm also referring to lightness and darkness. So of course that's a white shirt, but there are hundreds of colors within that shirt because we have this light blue, we have a lighter purple in some spots, a bright white where the sun hits it. So as you can see, it's just not wanting to select. If you look at the top, it says tolerance colon 32. This is my default setting, and what that'll be is how many, um, how many colors, like think of it like a giant rainbow, how many colors would it um, work with after you click away? So I put it up to 100 and I clicked and you can see how much more, really so much, um, that this will fill in. I keep on clicking on the body and you can tell that it's kind of going crazy here. Again, this is based on color. So at some point, what it's looking like, see how the whole plane is selected? Some color inside my person was similar to either the cloud or the sky, and it just took it all and ran with it. So that's not gonna work out for our purposes right now. Lastly, my favorite one is the object selection tool. Um, now this tool, I can say I did not have it when I first started teaching and learning Photoshop. This is very new. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to drag a box around my person. And it is so magical because if you look in the preview there, it can just tell. It just knows what to do. Um, and of course, if it's a little bit funky in the end, you can always go back in with that quick select tool over it to refine any edges. But this will take out all of that extra time on you. So I went ahead and I drew my rectangle around my person. And I'm just waiting on the computer to load now. And look at that. It was the perfect selection. This is better than anything, even tied with the quick select tool. And we're done. Thanks for watching.